Petcher's Pet Supply on the north side of the Charleston Square, serving the EIU community since 1991. Fetcher's welcomes all pets on a leash, is open seven days a week, and offers made in the USA food. Pet supplies for dogs, cats, reptiles, and fish. Fetcher's Pet Supply in Charleston. The Paw Report on WEIU is supported by Rural King, America's farm and home store, livestock feed, farm equipment, pet supplies, and more. You can find your store and more information regarding Rural King at RuralKing.com. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Power Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. Dr. Gregory Mock from the Kaskaskia Valley Animal Hospital has been a regular on the Paul Report for the last nine years. His segments are always full of valuable information for pet owners, but on this classic episode, he brought in several props, not necessarily ones he bought at the store, but in many cases, ones he surgically removed from pets. We take you back to an episode we titled, What Pets Shouldn't Eat. And Dr. Gregory Mock from the Kaskaskia Valley Animal Hospital joins us to talk about some very interesting topics today that I'm sure all of our viewers are going to be very intrigued by. And Dr. Mock, thank you for joining us. And Good to be you brought here. a lot of goodies uh, with you today. And what we're talking about is things, if you will, that your, your dog and sometimes even cats shouldn't be ingesting. Some mm -hmm. things that they can find around the home that end up in their tummies and then they end up in your office. So thank right, you both right. for, or thank you for, for joining uh, uh, us on this episode of the Paw Report. So I guess my first question is why do dogs and cats go after things that they shouldn't? Well, um, it's kind of like little kids. Um, it's kind of an exploration type thing. Um, especially, you know, we have a, a time period when they're puppies, we have a, a high rate of these kind of things happen. And it, um, it's not uncommonly associated with cutting teeth, so they're wanting to chew on things. But like a toddler, uh, sometimes they'll put something in his mouth to explore it. Um, dogs do that too. And dogs do a lot of exploration with their mouth, even as adults, chewing on things. You know, they sniff on things, they taste things. And so sometimes they get things in their mouth and then you would think, hey, I've got a rock in my mouth. I'm going to spit it out, but the dog, a lot of times, for some reason, just goes ahead and swallows it. And um, so a lot of times it's, it's a, a normal behavior. We get, when we talk about behaviors in dogs, we talk about things that are, um, you know, truly abnormal and things that are normal but annoying. Uh, so that's a normal but annoying behavior. But sometimes it is truly an abnormal behavior. It can be an obsessive, compulsive type thing. And a good example of that is... This uh, um, jar here is full of these horrible rocks that are, that are very rough. Um, there's also string, there's chunks of uh, um, wood in here, wire. Wow. And so this came from a um, pit bull who ate all of this, took it out of his stomach. Well, it wasn't three months later the owner let him out again, he ate an entire another batch. And so oh, I have another my jar at the office, looks just like this, full of the same wow. stuff from the same dog. So this dog has a real... Compulsive yes, disorder. Yes, compulsive, and he's an adult. And so when um, the owner takes that dog out now, he has to put a cage muzzle on him because mm -hmm. he will get into stuff like this and just compulsively eat it. And it's just the other one, the rock, one of the rocks is two to three times as big as this. It's, you know, it's How does it bigger than a golf ball. I don't, I don't know because they're rough. It's amazing to me that, that that dog can swallow that. And it's also amazing to me after he might get choke one of them down that he would turn around and do it again and again and again. So you can see with a dog like that, that's truly, you know, an abnormal type behavior. And the disorder is called pica. Is that right. it, that's the, yes. the the medical term yeah, for it? Yeah, P I C A. P I C A. And and as you said, this is something that develops into adult dogs. I mean, it right. can be common behavior for puppies, yeah. but yeah. as they get older, it's that's a compulsive disorder. Right. So what do you do, or what can what can a pet owner do? Well, unfortunately, that because uh, we can't. You know, people get pica too, 
Um, it's just one of the compulsive disorders. And, and so with a person, you can sit down with them and hopefully reason with them and they can understand, hey, this is harmful, even though I have this weird desire to eat certain things, like some people eat dirt. Um, they'll eat other types of you know, strange things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when their minds, you know, you can talk to them, they can say, hey, I have this weird desire, but I, it's gonna hurt me, so I can't do it. Um, we can't do that with a dog, obviously. They just have this strange desire, and we're not gonna change it. Um, there are certain drugs that we use for obsessive compulsive disorders that could mm -hmm. be helpful, but they're, they're not that helpful. So for the most part, we just have to try to keep that dog away from the things it wants to eat. I had a dog years ago that when the people would let him out, he would start scarfing up leaves until he was just vomiting up leaves. Um, and so, um, you know, they just couldn't let, had to take him out on a leash on an area where there weren't any leaves so that, to keep him away from them. So. Well, my dogs uh, very regularly would eat grass. Right. You know, and I would try to, you know, not, not let them do that, but that can be something, they might have a tummy ache or something that they're trying yeah. to. Yeah, and grass itself is really not an abnormal thing. Um, they've looked at that a lot actually, and dogs that just like our dogs, we let them out sometimes in the morning and they'll be grazing Midway. along, <laughs> eating. <laughs> And so that's actually a normal behavior for dogs. They get some um, vegetable material and things, and as long as they're not vomiting it back up, mm -hmm. um, that usually doesn't cause a huge problem. Although we opened a dog up uh, a month or two ago and who had eaten something, I don't remember what, to tell you the truth, we do so many of these, but we found a huge glob of grass impacted in the bottom of his stomach. Mm -hmm. And that was what was actually causing the symptoms at that time. But they were long, um, tough, you know, strings of grass that he um, couldn't pass on through. I'm real interested in some of these other items that you brought in the stories yeah. behind them. So I'm gonna let you, yeah. I'm, I'm very intrigued by the Gorilla Glue right. and clump. And that's a biggie. Um, and these items here, we, you know, we talk about, they sound kind of humorous. They're not funny if it's your dog. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them cause severe damage. We occasionally have an animal come in who's eaten something. It's done so much damage inside that um, we can't save them. Um, oh and a, a quick example of that, this is 17 feet of carpet fiber that a dog ate and he just started pulling it up kind of like you know, swallowing a piece of spaghetti, and he kept pulling up, pulling it up, swallowing, 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 until he'd eaten 17 feet. Oh my. Well, that strung all the way down his intestines, and what happens with uh, string-type foreign bodies is that you'll have a big glob, usually in the stomach or in the upper um, small intestine that gets stuck, mm -hmm. and then a part of the string strings all the way down. Well, then the intestines are trying to pull it down, and it telescopes up on that. And so with all that telescoping of the intestine, he actually sawed holes through his intestine all up and down. And so then all his intestinal contents spilled out into his abdomen. And so when he came in, he was deathly ill. Opened him up, removed parts of his intestine, sewed up a bunch, um, but he was so toxic, he passed on. So, oh, wow. so some of these are, are very serious. Wouldn't there be signs? Serious. I, I would, uh, that was a basset hound, actually. So. And I mean, is this like he eats it in one day and then? Oh yeah, yeah. This is not something that sat in his stomach for a while. Uh, and we don't know when, you know, cause he could have swallowed it all and had this big glob in his stomach that didn't really bother him. And then it started trickling down his intestines, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then as things got locked into place, that's when he showed symptoms. Oh, cause some of these items, um, you know, most of them people know they ate, we get to them fairly quickly. Um, but some, some things, you know, say a dog swallows a golf ball. It could sit there literally for years as long as it just stays in the stomach and no one would ever know it was there. Um, so, so you never really know, but a lot of, a lot of times we do because people find um, things that are chewed up or destroyed or their dogs just has gotten acutely ill mm -hmm. um, and then they find some. But you mentioned the Gorilla Glue and this is a... That doesn't even, uh, yeah. when I first picked like it up, lot. it doesn't look like that. No, and if, you, I don't, if you've ever used Gorilla Glue, it's a uh, um, super holding glue that you put in and then it expands um, and fills up the space there. And it's just a great glue to use, but you don't want to eat it. This amount, this big thing here, 
Um, it's prop this dog, because um, she had the package, and he may have swallowed at most a teaspoon of the glue. But when it hits the stomach and the water and everything, it expands. So dogs that eat, like if they eat a whole tube, it will expand as big as a basketball in their stomach oh and even rupture their stomach. So this dog, she knew had chewed it up and he was vomiting. And so how we find a lot of these, if you like a rock, for example, on an x-ray is highly visible or something mm -hmm. metal like a wire, um, needles, things like that. Uh, but things like this don't really show up very well. So we, we will give them barium and the barium will coat around That's what it. humans get too. Yes, you're right. And then you can see that. So a lot of these things like the glass or the grass glob, um, we had given that dog barium and you could see there was something down there. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know what it was at that point in time, just something that was globbing, the, the barium was you know, going around. So that's how we find a lot of these. So this dog, we gave barium, we could see there was something in his stomach. Um, and then she thought he had chewed this up. Um, so we opened him up and took that out and everything was fine um, because it was just in his stomach and it was just kind of mm -hmm. you know, irritating him, making him throw up, but it didn't do any damage. You mentioned um, the Basset Hound on the carpet. Uh, is it, is Pika more prone to certain breeds or, um, yeah. or eating or? Yeah definitely tend to see it in bigger active type dogs like labs um, different things though that's a good example um, you know so pit bulls they're prone to it i don't know if i've ever opened a little toy poodle up and they ate something um, so but like a you know like for example any dog can do it um, mm -hmm. had a pekingese years ago that was vomiting and shot an x-ray and there was lots of metal discs in his um, stomachs, so opened him up, quarters, nickels, dimes, everything took out of him. Well, then <laughs> the lady the started, bank. <laughs> yes, the lady started quizzing her young grandson, and it turns out that the day before the, the little boy was feeding oh, coins to the dog. Okay. Um, so any dog will eat stuff sometimes, but I, I assume that dog probably wouldn't have eaten that if the little boy hadn't been feeding to him like a piggy bank. Um, you also so. brought along some hosiery, uh, garland, uh, fishing lures. I, I, I want to know th these stories behind all of this and how yeah. it, it amazes me that an animal can, can digest this. Well, um, the gar Christmas garlands, four feet of Christmas garland, that one's, and that's one thing I want to talk about. Certain seasons, we get more of this. Mm -hmm. Christmas is a biggie because there's all these things out the dog doesn't normally see. And there are a lot of times they're sparkly and they're fun looking. And so we've got Christmas garland and a chewed up Christmas tree bulb. A few years ago in one week in the middle of December, I had three dogs come in who had eaten Christmas tree bulbs. And it, when they break up that's pieces, glass. very, that's a bad situation. Um, this dog, we were able to get them all out of. One dog, it had just um, lacerated his whole insides. It oh. was terrible. Um, the Christmas garland actually was eaten by my mom's dog. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, that's a so good souvenir young, yes. to have. So he was a little Yorkie. He ate this, and he was young. He was a puppy at this time. He got a hold of this and swallowed four feet of it. So, um, and so, as sometimes happened, we lucked out with him because uh, one of the sedatives we used before surgery um, is not, not uncommonly causes the dogs to vomit. So I gave him this sedative because I knew I was going to have to open him up and get this out, and he actually threw it up. So that worked out real well. For us. Occasionally, if we've got a small thing, like I had a dog last year that ate a little um, little mouse, um, it was a cat toy, cat toy. and he swallowed mm -hmm. it. And so um, we gave him um, an emetic and he vomited it back up. So, so occasionally we're able to get him out with going, without going in, but most of the time we end up doing a surgery to do that. Um, you brought hosiery. a pair, yeah, hosiery and underwear. Yeah, hosiery is a really common one. We see quite often. Um, and again, I don't know why the dogs would eat, you know, something this long like that, mm -hmm. but that's a, that's a common one we see. And occasionally people, they eat these and people don't know it and, and they will pass, occasion, you know, things will pass occasionally. Mm -hmm. I had a dog a few years ago at ate four um, sewing needles. Oh. And so we did an x-ray and there they were. So we decided with that dog just to feed him a very bulky diet. And over the next day, he actually did pass all of those needles. We were able to get them all out that way. What is the strange? I, and you've brought some strange well, things today. Yeah. What is act, What is the strangest thing that, I that's think ever the, the, through your office? Kind of the 
strangest type things we get um, are things like this, which um, I do a lot of talks for kids and things, and I always save this for last. It's the pace de resistance. <laughs> uh, but I had a, uh, a few years ago on Thanksgiving morning, I had a lady call me and, and she was, had been at work the night before and she came home and her dog was throwing up and sick and had chewed up a area of almost two feet of her carpet, like a foot by two feet. And he was throwing up carpet fibers and things. We did an x-ray, we could see stomach full of stuff. And so, we, you know, Thanksgiving morning had to open him up, cleaned out two quarts of carpet fibers out of this dog. But then I uh, reached down there and pulled out her underwear also <laughs> that he had eaten along with it. What, what kind so of dog? I'm a lab, a black lab. So, um, so anyway, those are, that's kind of a humorous one and, and everything turned out fine. He was fine, he hadn't done any damage inside. Mm -hmm. um, Fishing lures are very a common big one, I was... too. They, you know, they smell. They've either got, you know, like here's also a large hook I removed from a dog, and so we get fish hooks, fishing lures. They smell, you know, they're fishy and they, or they've got bait on them and that type of thing. And the dog will start licking at them, and a lot of times they don't get real far. Now this lure um, here actually came from the back of a dog's mouth. So things like that, it's not uncommon. They're stuck in the back of their pharynx, they're in their mouth, um, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Um, rarely would something with hooks, but the bad thing with a hook is if they do get it past here, it, a lot of times it doesn't get to their stomach, it gets stuck in their esophagus, mm -hmm. which is a really bad place. That's the worst place because that's the one spot that surgically to get to is, is very, very difficult. difficult. Um, so, and there is a huge difference between when something is swallowed and it ends up in the stomach or it ends up in the intestines. The stomach is a pretty easy organ to do surgery with, um, and a lot of damage doesn't occur there. Um, so, you know, so if we, you know, have something swallowed, you know, we'd much rather go into the stomach um, and get it out. If we have to go into the intestine, we've got a whole different ball game. Cutting into the intestine, both are contaminated, so we have to worry about contamination um, situations. Because when we, you know, we're doing surgery, it's sterile until we cut through the wall, the intestine, or the stomach. Then we've got contaminated contents, and so that's that's a problem. But the intestine is very small around, and so when we cut into it. Um, suturing it back up is difficult. There's not much room in there, and so if an, like here, a good example of that would be this um, peach pit that this dog swallowed. So it got past the stomach, got into the small intestine, got lodged in there. Mm -hmm. So when it lodges in there, um, it puts so much pressure on the wall, the intestine, that it actually uh, can kill the intestinal wall. So if we don't know about it quickly and get it out, then it puts so much pressure on, we open them up, well, there's the item, but the intestinal wall is turning black. So, or sometimes it's actually already perforated. Um, we'll go in and something has got through and it's put so much pressure on the intestinal wall, it's made a hole. So we have to cut that in section of intestine out. That's called a resection and anastomosis. So we actually have to- All over a peach pit. Yeah. So we had a dog a number of years ago that chewed up a little teddy bear. And the packing and things got lodged in his intestine, mm -hmm. killed that part of his intestine. Mm. So we had to remove about a foot of his intestine, which is, that's a very difficult procedure because um, we have to cut it off at each end where there's blood supply, then reconnect it with each other and suture it. Um, so this, that dog, most of the time that goes fine, even though it's technically difficult. Um, the teddy bear dog, um, about a few months later, formed an adhesion um, around the site, which is where things start sticking to it in the intestine. Um, it twisted off, when it did that with the adhesion, it twisted off that area and killed that. So we had to open him back up and do another intestinal resection and anastomosis on that dog and take out another foot of his intestine. Oh. And that was all from chewing up a little teddy bear um, that he ended up did, having and the all dog that. He, he did fine after that. Didn't have any more problems after that. Mm -hmm. but, but sometimes, you know, we have a situation where there's so much damage that we have to do, you know, these more, um, difficult types of surgeries, or we may have problems down the road with adhesions and Recovery things like and that. You've, um, you've brought a lot of items. There's probably a lot of other poisons that dogs, 
And, and we yes, talked yes. Mid- briefly about cats. I mean, cats do yeah, the same thing. Yeah, I have thing. a couple of things. Like, I had a cat come in years ago who just kept vomiting and throwing up. And um, anyway, at the end of Christmas time, he had swallowed these artificial Christmas tree needles. Cats like little things like little that. Things. Um, or stringy strings. That's their big thing. But for every cat we do, we do 40 dogs or 50. And why is that? They're just more curious? And yeah, and they're just more apt to do that. Cats are more sensible than dogs are. Other things around the home that, that can be dangerous to animals. Yeah, and you mentioned plants. Um, we get a lot of plant toxicity. Cats are a little more prone to that. Um, most things that a lot of people have around the house aren't super toxic, um, like philodendrons. They're just irritating. Poinsettias are um, kind of thought to be toxic, but really not that toxic. Um, you have to eat a lot of them um, to get, and, and it's it's just an irritant toxin. Chocolate's um, a big one everybody talks yeah. about. And chocolate is toxic um, to dogs, but only because they engorge themselves on it. The toxic, what's toxic in it is just caffeine or theobromine, which is another caffeine related um, drug. Um, I might sit down and eat some chocolate. A dog, if you say you leave a bowl of chocolates laying out, he'll eat the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we'll have a dog who weighs 30 pounds, eats two pounds of chocolates. Well, that would be like me eating 12 pounds of chocolates. Well, I'm, I'm not going to do that. But if I did, I'd be deathly ill too. Mm-hmm. I would have caffeine toxicity and be horribly sick. Um, but dogs will do that. Um, and the other thing that, and we are seeing more and more around here, but um, mulch around trees that are made from cocoa. They smell, it's real pretty, it's dark, it smells chocolatey, um, but dogs will chew that up and get chocolate poisoning too or caffeine. And that's probably something too that could get lodged that would require a surgical removal. Right, right. So that's a problem. What's, you know, as we as we end our conversation, what's some things you can tell pet owners to, you know, you mentioned the, the pit bull owner had to put essentially a muzzle over mm-hmm. the dog yeah. so it wouldn't eat the rocks. Other things that, that can be some good advice for, for well, people. Well, uh, the big thing is to, to know your pet, um, if he's apt to even do this. Most, you know, we've had dogs for years and never had an issue like this. Most dogs wouldn't do this, but there are some that would. So you kind of have to know, is my pet prone to doing this? But also when you get a puppy, that's the danger time. And of course you don't know that puppy yet. And and he is a puppy, you know, what's he gonna end up? Um, So like my mom's dog, after he ate the Christmas garland, then never did it again, you know. So when he did that as a puppy, one other thing he did as a puppy, he's chewed up an electrical cord. Um, probably which probably popular too. Right, yeah. And that wasn't uh, plugged in luckily, but um, I've had dogs eat entire electrical cords. Um, and so, um, so that's the big thing is that danger zone when they're puppies. And I always tell people the, the, the most dangerous zone is four to eight months because that's when they're starting to cut their teeth, they're cutting their teeth, they're getting more active and running around and, and doing things. And so we get a lot of problems during that time. So you should um, keep the puppies active, walk them, play yeah, with them. Yeah. You know. Yes, and keep and give them things they can chew on. Um, that they know, you know, this is your toy. But toys can be dangerous too. Um, this is a nice Kong toy that a uh, Great Dane had and tried to swallow it and got lodged in the back of his throat and almost choked to death. We were able to get it out, but he was he was about a goner. Um, so that was a very scary one. And that's a super great toy. Their Kong toys are great. Um, but unfortunately, his situation um, he was big enough, he was able to get that, mm-hmm. that down. So, mm. so that's the thing, you want to give them things that, that are safe and high quality things. Don't uh, buy, you know, cheapy toys for them because mm-hmm. um, they do fall apart and the next thing you know, they've got pieces. They're in your office. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, well, thank you, Dr. Mock, for joining us today. Some very interesting stories, some items that I just, you know, I've been a dog owner all my life and uh, thankfully I've, I've had dogs chew up carpet, but not, you know, fishing lures and Christmas yeah. trees. So <laughs> very interesting stuff. So we thank you for yep. spending Glad a little time here. with us today on the Paw Report. And we thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.
If you're a veterinarian, trainer, groomer, specialist, rescue organization, or shelter that would like to partner with The Paw Report by providing expert guests for the show, please contact us by emailing weiu at weiu.net or call 217-581-5956. If you have a topic you'd like to see on the show or questions for our experts, contact us with those too. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Power Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. The Paw Report on WEIU is supported by Rural King, America's farm and home store, livestock feed, farm equipment, pet supplies, and more. You can find your store and more information regarding Rural King at RuralKing.com. Fetcher's Pet Supply on the north side of the Charleston Square, serving the EIU community since 1991. Fetcher's Welcomes All Pets on a Leash is open seven days a week and offers made in the USA food. Pet supplies for dogs, cats, reptiles, and fish. Fetcher's Pet Supply in Charleston. Additional support for the Paw Report on WEIU is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Thank you. 